You're listening to The Money Hour with your host, Tina Mitchell, on Alternative Talk, AM 1150. Now, back to the show with local mortgage and finance expert, Tina Mitchell. Welcome back to The Money Hour with your host and mortgage expert, Tina Mitchell, right here on 1150 AM KKNW, the Saturday, March 25th show. I am here to help you build a strong financial blueprint one week and one show at a time. If you're hearing my show at a different time or day, you are listening to a rebroadcast to talk with the guests that I have in studio. You can call the show at one 855 411150 Again, that's one 855 400 1150 or online at themoneyhour.com. And in studio right now, I have Maya Butler and Rosemary West with Real Logic Sotheby's International Realty. Thank you so much, you guys, for coming back in studio. Thank you. Love seeing so you guys much. across from me with the big, huge smiles and very excited to talk about kind of what's happening in the real estate market and some different factors that are affecting us right here in our local market. And before we do that, a little bit about uh, the two of them. Maya is a dedicated residential real Real estate broker specializing in unique, exceptional homes with extraordinary lives. Maya is a lifetime resident of the Seattle Bellevue area and represents properties in Seattle, Bellevue, Medina, Clyde Hill, Kirkland, Hunts Point, Evergreen Point, Juanita, and Issaquah. She provides her clients with over 40 years of real estate sales and marketing experience. She provides herself on providing the highest caliber of service with integrity and with the utmost discretion. She is highly regarded for her negotiating skills and her wealth of local knowledge and experience in negotiating complex real estate transactions for her clients, whether selling or purchasing properties. Rosemary, a longtime resident of Medina, Washington, has practiced real estate in the involving and growing Bellevue and Seattle areas, a professional real estate broker over 20 years. Her extensive marketing, sales experience, advertising, and public relations are the foundation of her large local network thriving and repeat and referral business. Rosemary knows how to locate and negotiate the ideal properties for her clients and truly loves the entire real estate experience and process, whether that means assisting incredible people in the task of finding their next home or helping an investor find that perfect income producing property. She is known for her detail, efficient and tireless work ethic and deep care for her clients and their experience. She has much gratitude and appreciation for all the people that she's worked with, both past and present. Rosemary is thrilled to align herself with the award-winning marketing and global network of Real Logic Sotheby International Realty. Providing the Sotheby's white glove service, the most value compliment is to be referred to her clients, families and friends. Okay, so we're talking about uh, factors that are having an impact on the real estate market and very happy again to have you guys back in studio. So what about this bubble everyone seems to be afraid of? Why, what's what's happening right now in the market? Are you guys concerned about the bubble coming or what's your, what's your opinion? Well, Tina, my take on the bubble is that we are seriously not in a bubble. If uh -huh. we are, we're at the bottom of it. So Seattle and Bellevue are now the number one location for Chinese residential real estate buyers. And the median sale price for a house in Bellevue is now $744,000. I know. This is because the Pacific Northwest is still one of the most affordable cities in the United States. Surprising. One main reason for this is that there are is a new foreign buyer tax in Vancouver, uh -huh. British Columbia. So the Chinese are now looking to the Seattle Bellevue area to invest their money. This area has a much lower median home price and the area is still ripe with plenty of opportunities for investors. According to the um, Epoch Times, Seattle housing prices are rising faster than anywhere else in the country. And there's not been the usual slowdown during the holiday season as we've seen historically in past years. Home prices in Seattle rose 11% last year wow. and 13% in Bellevue. So according to the SPK Schiller National Index pricing, the U.S. national average for real estate is 5.5%. So What's driving a lot of this is the Seattle technology industry or the regional technology yep. industry. And uh, 
the, it's going to be bringing on literally record population growth. In addition to homegrown companies such as Amazon, Microsoft, Starbucks, Boeing, Costco, there are many Silicon Valley firms that now have offices in this region. Yeah, and so, and so what growth factors do you guys look at as professional realtors in the Puget Sound area? One of the things that's happening in our area that's so exciting and beyond anything we could ever have imagined, this is one of the reasons that Maya and I both believe that there's not going to be a bubble in our area anytime soon. We have a, a tremendous lack of inventory at the moment, uh -huh. and there is not a lot of new construction coming in. And what yeah. is coming in is multifamily or in the outer areas. So what you're dealing with is you have Ble Blue Origin that has been established by Jeff Bezos in the Kent areas, uh -huh. and SpaceX is coming along with that as well. They're going to be competition for them. NASA has, in conjunction with the space program that they're doing, has really increased the opportunity for bringing in more growth, more opportunity, more professionals, mm -hmm. more engineers, scientists that are coming in, and that is going to grow in the Kent area. SpaceX and Blue Origin, I don't know if people are really familiar with what these companies are doing, uh -huh. but it's changing the way we live. It's going to change the vision that we have for the future of real estate even. Uh -huh. They're trying to colonize space. If that's the case, it's a vision. It's a sure. vision Jeff Bezos had as a young man. Mm -hmm. And it's coming. It's actually, actually a very, very interesting thing that's happening that I it, it's beyond exciting. Uh -huh. Because what that's going to do is the growth in the Kent area is going to just boom. We have the Southport area as yeah. well, where in that area, Hi the Hyatt Regency just is ready to do a soft opening, I believe, in July okay. on the, the first waterfront hotel that there is on the south end of Lake Washington. Uh -huh. And then you have Microsoft also coming into that area. A lot of tech. Renton this is something Maya and I have been very involved in. Renton City, uh, the city's being completely revitalized and re-energized and redesigned by Bayless Architectural Firm out of Bellevue. What they're going to do is they're going to make it more pedestrian friendly, mm -hmm. more, and it's already seen so much growth. You're seeing in that area already properties that are not teardowns that are selling for $500,000 yeah. just because things crazy. are going so crazy. Where is everyone going to have to live? Yeah. I don't know. Traffic is an issue. Yeah. You cannot actually commute all the way to Seattle and Bellevue if mm -hmm. you're working in Kent. Sure. So there's going to be some growth in the outer areas that we have not seen before, yeah. which also is happening in Bellevue, Kirkland, Seattle, we're going to see in another surge is just surgeons of more appreciation in properties because there's just not anywhere else to grow. Yeah, you either have to tear something down, sure. rebuild it, and the cost of building is more expensive today than it was. Yeah, two days, and I know you talked about ago, with even. the new construction and how to build our panel for one of my power hour lunch and learns and listening to all of the restrictions that are on our, our builders is is just another crazy thing. So let's talk about interest rates and how the interest rates are affecting buyers and what you see. I know with the seller side, when the interest rates go up, it's going to be challenging for you know the inventory because then sellers are not going to want to sell when they're at a high three, low four interest rate. What about the impact to our buyers? What do you guys see on that? Well, you know, the interest rates are slowly going up, and we can expect them to continue mm -hmm. to arise, especially with this administration. So, um, but I don't think that there's going to be really a slowdown in the purchases of homes and condos in the area. Right. Just because there are so many people moving in because of the tax tech industry in yes. the area. So, Yeah. And what about uh, regarding transportation? How do you think that this is going to affect the development in the Puget Sound region? Traffic has become increasingly an issue, as mm -hmm. everyone well knows. If you ever have to be in downtown Seattle, over in the Queen Anne area, you see the Mercer, just the slowdown that happens there. Yeah. You see uh, 405 is an issue. 520 is an issue. I-90 mm -hmm. is an issue. It's everywhere. So what's going to have to happen, and Maya and I were just speaking of this this morning because we have so many clients that want their commute to be very close to their where they work, sure. shop, and do what they need sure. to do. Mm -hmm. So the issue is to look for something that's within five minutes of some, wherever they work, wherever their job may be or their business may uh -huh. be. And then you look at a 10-minute radius. 
and then a 15 minute radius. And 15 minutes away from your office, that can take you an hour to two hours to get home during traffic hour. Yeah. So when you look at all those factors, it is changing the way people look at real estate, how they decide where they're going to live. Mm -hmm. the, the other issue is sound transit. It really is not there yet. Yeah. We, there's so many issues where I've heard people say, well, I take the bus. If we were in 2030, it would be a whole different picture. Correct. <laughs> Correct. And <laughs> maybe by then we'll coming. have flying yeah. cars. <laughs> exactly. So it would be a whole different idea. Yeah. yeah. So what we're seeing with sound transit, town transit is actually overflowing in their bus routes. Mm -hmm. People are having to wait to get onto a bus. Yeah. Granted, you have Microsoft, Expedia, Amazon, that they all, all have their own Google, Facebook. Yep. They have their own way of transporting their own their own employees. Their people, yes. And they have you know, the Wi-Fi and, uh, buses and where they can have their mobile offices. So it's a uh -huh. little bit different in that respect. But yes, we're going to see a continued absolute congestion of traffic. And that is going to affect prices, which is also anything in the core area downtown Bellevue, downtown Kirkland, downtown Seattle, yeah. downtown Redmond, Sammamish even, Renton, you're going to see an increase in appreciation. Yeah. So so since we know that it's probably going to stick around for a while, this lack of inventory is, doesn't look like it's going to get better anytime soon. And it's so competitive out there for our buyers. I know you guys do a lot of, you know, really... Um, uh, hand-holding with your clients and you've been in the industry for a long time and have a lot of expertise and what are you sharing with your buyers and how to be more competitive in this market Maya the first thing that I tell the buyers is to get a pre-approval letter or a letter of credit from their lender yep it's the very first thing mm -hmm. a lot of lenders have programs too that or they call them same as cash, where they mm -hmm. can make a cash offer and then refinance it right afterwards. Uh -huh. So it depends upon the lender. Yes. And I know you know all about mm -hmm. that. So those are the first things that anyone should consider. Um, checking your credit history. Yeah. That varies, you know, that'll depend upon what kind of interest rate you get on sure. your mortgage. Mm -hmm. So those are just a few of the things that we first tell our buyers. A lot of buyers that we also work with are cash buyers moving uh -huh. into the area. Yep. And uh, to be competitive on these offers, you um, want to, you know, wave inspections yes. and a lot of people are doing pre-inspections now so that they feel comfortable waving an inspection um, on their offer uh -huh. uh, you pretty much to be competitive wave anything yeah on this cash shorter closing are you times. guys going in and, and having your buyers waive uh, their finance contingency and just what we don't do this okay. is something that for liability reasons uh -huh. you just do not ever want to advise your client to waive any kind of contingency yeah it's totally up to them yep they have to feel comfortable with what they are waiving yeah and if they're the one thing that we recommend when you have like 20 offers that mm -hmm. are being offered on one property you have to really look at what is important to you yes is this home really what you want and yep. if you lose out is it something that you're going to be totally devastated by yes and if this is the house for you do the pre-inspection yeah do the things that need to be done finance why that you can don't need to have that finance contingency in place yes but it's very important for our clients and we educate them to find their buyers to actually find the right people to make sure that they are comfortable waiving those inspe yeah. that inspection the finance contingency and any other contingency they may need and I, th I think that's it. that's really great um, advice, Rosemary. I mean, you really um, uh, line it up for your buyers and exactly what their options are and what the risks are attached to those options. And then it's up to, um, you know, for them to make that decision. Uh, Maya, what about for you? You know, a lot of people should consider escalation clauses too yes. when they make the offers mm -hmm. nowadays. And we are, we're commonly seeing escalations up to a hundred thousand dollars over asking price yeah so explain really quickly and then um, I've got a couple minutes I want to ask one more question before we go to break um, explain to my listeners an escalation clause how that works well uh, in an escalation clause they say they would pay so much mm -hmm. so much like five thousand or ten thousand or two thousand over the highest offer received yes. okay 
up to a certain dollar amount. And and you're saying 100,000 might be that, you know, that limit. 100,000 or more. Yes. I've heard of more. Yeah. Up to 600,000. Crazy, I know. Oh my God. <laughs> I know. So the um, but the one thing about the escalation clause is that the they have to provide you with written documentation that they had a valid offer. Yes. So basically, you're going in and saying, "Look, I'm going to pay." You know, if you did six hundred thousand, obviously, you're saying you're going to pay the highest. Nobody's going to pay that much for the home, and I'm going to get this house regardless. So there's a lot of different creative things that you can do out there, um, and we need to have a show, you know, a conversation just on that next time that you guys come in. Um, but I've got a minute to wrap it up, and I just for my sellers out there, should they be selling their home right now? Yes, absolutely. Yep. Because here's what's interesting about the market: you have. Lack of inventory. Uh -huh. We're coming into springtime. Fabulous time to put your place on the market. Yes. Interest rates are going up. It's going to also, in some cases, eliminate potential buyers. Mm -hmm. So there's there's a time period here that, yes, we are seeing great appreciation right now, yeah. and it's a great time to put your place on the market. But what's going to happen in the future is a lot of unknowns. Uh -huh. Today's also a very crucial time for our president to find out what's going on with the healthcare industry. That's sure. gonna affect and trickle down on everything else, mm -hmm. taxes, real estate, regulations, everything else that happens in the future. So all of those issues are unknowns. Yeah. What we do know right at this moment. It's a great market. There's a, there's a great market. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of inventory. Everyone has a demand, a high demand with buyer inventory uh -huh. that they can come and take a look at what you may have to offer. Sure. And this is a great time to, to if you want to move up, because the interest yeah. rates still are a very good, yes. good situation. This is when they would call you, Tina, and find uh -huh. out what can, what is my buying power? Exactly. And this is my move of time. Or is it time for me to downsize? Yeah. Is it time for me to go the empty nesters? Yeah. Is it time to get rid of the big estate yeah. and go to a condo? This is the perfect time. So I'm, and and that's great, you guys. It's it's really just getting the information. It is a great time to sell your home. You've got to be able to find another property, but that's another conversation as well. And we know real estate is guaranteed. It's going to go up and down. So at some point in time, we're going to see our market go down. The question is when it's going to happen. So if it makes for you sense for you as a seller, it's a great time. So thank you so much, you guys, for coming back in studio. It's always a pleasure chatting with you. Thank you, You're welcome. Tina. Thank you, Tina. Coming up next in the Money Hour, are you thinking of selling your home? Strategies to get top dollar in this crisis crazy real estate market. Jamie Flaxman with Coldwell Banker Bain right here at 1150 AM KKNW after this short break.